my kitchen. I kind of took a few days off of live, so um, hopefully you enjoyed the videos I did put up and maybe even made yourself some in inexpensive and easy holiday or any time of the year presents to make. So we did things like oatmeal cookie sugar scrub, which is like a body scrub. It's really inexpensive and it's perfect for last minute gifts, even if it's not like this season, right? Because people have birthdays all year long. Um, and I see some people are coming in, so please come and say hello. Um, we also did some chili powder, and there may be some other things I put up too. So today, what we're going to be making is ramen. So we're going to be kind of just do, basically, we're making Kathy's lunch is what we're doing. <laughs> I had some stuff around, and so I thought it would be really nice to kind of just show you how easy it is. And we'll talk a little bit about the noodles and things as we go along. And I'm, I see a lot of you, but I'm not seeing any um, chats yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. I, hi, Jackie. I just wanted to make sure I was everything was going as planned. And hey, Dee from Florida and Linda. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to do, so ideally, if I was by my stove, I would have a larger pot than this. But this is what works best on here. So I'm gonna chop up some onion, or I'm gonna have chopped up some onions, and I'm gonna water saute them in this pan while everybody's talking and then I'll check messages. Cause you know that cooking onions is often the longest part of the process. And I hear everybody coming in to say hi now, which makes me very happy. Thank you for making me happy. Um, I'll let you guys see overhead because really it's nothing too terribly exciting. But we want to really, since we're basically kind of building a broth, we're going to be using some bouillon cubes and probably some mushroom powder and other things. But that's the most important part. So you could even make a special broth ahead of time. I'm kind of doing it on the fly. And hello, Heather and Ramesh. And I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong uh, for everybody. H hello, Facebook user from the UK. I don't see your name, but I am glad you're here. And uh, Joe from the UK. It could be this, is it the same person? Switch different. Hello, Linda. Oh, yay, you made it to your very first live. Well, I hope it's fun, or at least as much fun for you as it is for me. I am making lunch for me, but I wish I could be making lunch for you guys too. Um, oh, and somebody loves Lotus Noodles Ramen, and we're gonna talk about that, actually, because that's a really good gluten-free alternative. Um, most ramen is made with wheat, which is fine if you can eat wheat and you don't have a gluten intolerance. As always, I will be giving you options for different things as we go along so that it fits in with your special diet. My special diet is vegan and gluten-free. Um, yeah, chopped onion, it's all gotta start with chopped onion, right? Um, so I'm gonna just let that go a little bit. I probably put a little bit too much water in at that time. But you know what? It's all good. It's gonna be soup anyhow. Now, the reason I'm sauteing with water instead of oil is that I wanted to make this an oil-free version for you. If you guys use oil, you want to heat up maybe like anywhere between two teaspoons and a tablespoon of a neutral flavored oil or olive oil, which is not neutral flavored, but I enjoy it in savory foods. Let that get hot then add your onion. If you're water sauteing, you can just do it any time because it's not like the onions are just gonna absorb the water. So we've got that going on for us. And let's see what we've got. And Curtis, um, awesome, from South Carolina. Nice to see your lovely masked avatar. I appreciate that very much. Sarah says, off topic, do you have a trick for avoiding tears when cutting onions? And thank you for all you do. Sarah, 
I kind of just like buck up and do it. I, a lot of you guys weren't watching me live when I was going live every day. I think it was in April when the pandemic had kind of started really, well, had at that time reached a peak. Now we're in whole new times here in the US, but um, I actually cut onions for like three hours. So I did a chop and chat where I cut stuff up and just chatted. I have heard running under uh, running it under water can help before you do it. Um, but you know, the, the best trick that I would say, honestly, is to not to try and get fresher onions. I find the older my onions are, the more I tear up, the more pungent they are. And I know that's kind of a non-answer. But you could also try peeling it, cutting it in half, rinsing it in cool water, and then see if you can get through it. Try it a half at a time, and then if it sort of helped, but near the end it got a little more pungent again, you can't really go re-rinse that onion, but you could rinse the other half right before you started. So that's what I would do. Um, and hey, Jeremy, awesome. It's good to have you here. <coughs> and Joanne says, we wish you could be making us lunch also. Well, this is kind of an experiment, even though there's um, a similar recipe in the Easy Vegan Cookbook. And I put that link up there too. And I did also put up a link um, for these noodles. So these are the noodles I'm going to use. And I'll show you. Oh, you know what? I totally need to turn on my fan. See, I'm out of practice. Because I am I was getting ready to show you something with the overhead camera and realized it is completely fogged up at the moment. <laughs> I'm kind of slowly, slowly getting back in the groove. But so they're already in kind of like individual little romaine servings. So there's four in a package. I cooked up two of these. And this is how the package is. And I gave you a link to where they have some different varieties of these on Amazon. But you can do something besides making a soup. You can use them in stir fries and all kinds of things. And they're going to be kind of stuck together now, but I cooked them up a little bit earlier. And so they're really yummy. Okay, now let's turn it down a little bit. And I think that, yeah. You see these are getting a little bit soft. Now I'm putting in a lot, I'm going to squish this garlic. So I'm using my garlic smusher official term. You guys can kind of see how it's it's really easy. I haven't brought this out in a while. Then all you need to do, all I need to do is scrape it off of here. It's best rinsed right away, so I'll do that shortly. If not, you'll have to scrub it off a little bit, but since we don't really need to do, we don't need to add extra work for ourselves. And see how these got translucent or kind of clear, less solid white? That's what we were looking for. Going to add those in there. Oh, and Lisa Payne had a good answer for the onions. She says if using a really sharp knife helps. This is probably two to three cups of sliced shiitake mushrooms. You don't have to use shiitake mushrooms. And see, this is where I was telling you it would probably be better if I used a larger pan. But that's okay. We're going to make it work. You could use regular button mushrooms. I had these and I from the last trip to the Asian market. And in fact, this is only half of the mushrooms that I had. So I think I'm going to make a nice stir fry this week too for dinner or perhaps for a live. Um, so those are so nice. Those are going to cook down and make an amazing, amazing flavor for us. So let's see what we've got here. And Curtis has a, a suggestion, burn a candle when cutting onions. Hello, Laura from Chicago. 
and hello Miss Helene and she Miss Helene likes to wash peeled onions and Heather has okay well wow, okay sorry guys I missed a lot of you guys so let me go back um, do 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 all right there we go and these are already starting to give a nice aroma and Katie loves oil free that's the date I diet I'm trying to do plant-based like whole food plant-based and I know a lot of you probably most of you are um, doing oil free I like to go ahead and add in oil options for other people since people are in different places right and everybody's welcome here anyone who's meatless Monday people you know if you want to whatever you want to do get pick up some vegan flavor tips any of that I'm just glad you're here uh, Jeremy switched over for YouTube and he hails from Texas okay and Heather has, has um, ramen-like noodles made from sweet potato starch. I believe those are Korean starch noodles, but I could be wrong. Um, not a bad texture, but different. Yeah, it's more like a glass. I don't know if they're proper glass noodles, but glass noodles do have a different texture than ramen. And you know what? You can totally use those. Um, let me let you see how these are starting to cook down so nice. And so see, that's kind of making its own concentrated flavor. Okay, I'm gonna put two of my bouillon cubes in there that were straight from the freezer. And if you wanna get that recipe, you can go to plantbasedinstantpot.com or healthyslowcooking.com and look up bouillon. It's super easy, super cheap and good so what more do you want <laughs> let me have a drink of my tea all okay and i think i already said curtis said burned a candle when cutting onions sharp knife from lisa oh mia says she can smell it all the way over there and that is like almost an hour away Let's see i may need to go ahead I don't mind if some of this gets on the bottom. That's gonna make good flavor. We're just gonna make sure to kind of pseudo deglaze the pan. We're not really deglazing the pan, but it's kind of the similar idea. And what's in these cubes are cooked onions. Um, the bouillon recipe calls for onions, carrots, celery, thyme, which you don't really taste. It just adds a little extra oomph and some nutritional yeast because I want to get this to be a nice flavorful broth and we're going to add some other things to it as well <laughs> so it's a diet noodles I don't know if these are diet noodles um, but you could if you don't do any flowers if you're on chef AJ's program you could totally, instead of using any kind of cooked noodle, you could use a spiralized zucchini, butternut squash, carrots, because in the winter is a really good time to get the big fat carrots that spiralize really well. Okay, so while that's going on, I'm also gonna add probably about a teaspoon or two of tamari. I'm using a gluten-free tamari you could use soy sauce and then I'm also gonna up the ante because I have some porcini powder so I'm gonna put just like a, an eighth of a teaspoon to start with I'm just gonna put a little bit in to add that kind of darker earthier flavor yeah I had to get in my it in my smell that smells pretty good when you're dealing with something like um, a mushroom powder which is super strong you're really going to um, want to start smaller and and level it up as we go okay and I just kind of want these I want to before I put in the carrots I just want to make sure those bouillon cubes are melted 
and distributed well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of cups of water, probably three cups ish. And I'm going to go ahead and put these carrots in because they need to cook. So we'll start there. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. And we're kind of, I'm going to taste this a little bit. I put a little bit of tamari in there. After it's cooked a little bit, I'm going to add some miso to there too. So what I feel, we've got some nice darker flavors. And we could even add like, you could add a little bit of lime juice or you could add a little bit of rice wine vinegar if you need a little more bite or brightness to it. We're also going to add some ginger and that I think is going to brighten it up too. Let me see what we've got. Yeah, the garlic masher is awesome and you can get it on Amazon. Um, I got mine at a thrift store that had never been used. And it just, if you have a really big clove, like what the clove of garlic I had was kind of on the cusp. So you might have to cut it in half. It does better with smaller cloves, which in fact is kind of nice because that's what's a pain to chop up, in my opinion. Um, the water is absorbed. I'm trying to think, of, I'm trying to go back to where you were saying that, Ramesh. Um, oh, the water, probably I wasn't saying, I may have used the word absorb, but I probably meant um, cooked down so that as the steam was coming out, we were cooking those flavors down. So um, like when we cooked the mushrooms, the mushrooms release moisture. And since we were cooking it down, it became a little bit of a concentrate. So a faux mushroom concentrate. If you had mushroom broth, you could totally use mushroom broth instead. I am not on team broth. I am on team bullion because of storage space. So if I make a big pot of broth, it has to go in my fridge or have a big place in my freezer. And I'm just not about that. I don't have that kind of space. But if I make bullion cubes, I freeze them in ice cube trays and then I put them in plastic bags. And then like you saw, then I just take out two when I need two and it just stores easier. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, okay, great. And Jackie also washes her peeled onions to cut down on tears. Amelia says, I wanted to ask how many standard two tablespoon ice cube trays does the bullion recipe use? That's a really good question. Here's why it's a hard answer. It should be two to three standard ice cube trays. Now, I almost never make just that. I just take the onion and I start throwing stuff in there. So a lot of times I will have three to four ice cube trays. So that's why I'm not giving you a straight answer. So I kind of apologize for that. Uh, and Jackie said she had the same noodles yesterday for lunch. It had a seasoning packet. It had red miso and wakame. Yeah, this, so this is the big bags that have four of those. They also have little bags that have seasoning packets with them. And I've got to tell you, when I have the flu or something like that, pretty much all I eat are um, little ramen noodle packets. Um, there are some of the Thai noodles, not all. Some are vegan, some are not. And they're not apparent to which ones are not. So read the labels really carefully. But those used to be a go-to, but I don't find those as often. It was like Thai Kitchen, I think, the people who make the little bottles of red curry paste. And hi, New Yorker. Glad you're here. Okay, Ramesh is saying you can add a little tomato sauce, and you certainly can. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be putting some of this sriracha on top for me because Cheryl can't have it. So that's where I'm going to get some of the flavor. But you totally could add um, tomato paste, tomato powder, because I'm working on an umami powder right now using like 
ground mushrooms and tomatoes and some other things in nutritional yeast with or without because I know some of you guys are allergic or it aggravates some health conditions that you have. But absolutely, that's a great idea, Ramesh. Um, okay, awesome. And here's Judy. <laughs> Welcome. Glad you're here. Sorry you're late. The recipe doesn't really exist because I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. But so what do we have here? We've probably got one small onion dice sauteed with one large clove of garlic or two cloves of garlic, about a teaspoon. Um, we've got two to three cups of sliced mushroom stemmed, removed, and I'm going to be dehydrating those. I put in about a teaspoon of soy sauce. Actually, it was gluten-free tamari. I've got some carrots, probably about a cup of carrots in there. Uh, two bouillon cubes. I feel like this is a test. You know when they do the names around in parties, like I can't remember names, so I always lose at that. Um, oh, and I put about an eighth of a teaspoon of porcini mushroom powder, which is just optional. And then I have some other things I'm gonna play with. And we're gonna put some ginger in here, and actually, I think I'll go ahead and do that. Probably about, let's see, is it, yeah. Let's start with, like that's probably a teaspoon. We're just letting this simmer to kind of get some of the yummy flavor out and really concentrate everything in there. So we're, we're making what's typically done over a long period of time to make the broth. But we're making this quick broth because basically today's live is making lunch with Kathy. And I'll leave this over here in case we need a little more ginger. Okay, awesome. And so I'm gonna just let this cook for a few minutes. Oh, I see some ginger. And just in case you've ever wondered, I clean this off very well before I come on live, which is why I feel okay about taking some little pieces that fall off of there. Um, yeah, the ginger's bringing that lighter note that I felt like it needed. And since I'm making, and you could also skim off some of this broth if you wanted to. I don't really see a need for it. Um, we do that with like tofu, when we're making tofu off the soy milk because it's bitter. That's nice. It needs more. So I'm going to add a second. Um, teaspoon of tamari, and then soon I'm going to add the miso, but I want that to be the last thing. You could also, there's some vegan fish sauce, and this one is soy free, and it has things like apple cider vinegar, molasses, lime juice, and if you guys took the sauce classes, remember we did an oil-free sauce class one and two, I think it was the beginning of this year, I made um, homemade Worcestershire sauce, which you can't say, but I can make a delicious one. We made um, a fish sauce. So you can still go and get that class or the other classes at kathyhester.podia, P-O-D-I-A.com if you want to take a class. I would love to have you there. Okay, great. And Laura says she gets these noodles in a bigger bag. So what we're using too, what makes it gluten-free is that these are millet and brown rice ramen. And you can get these in these four, four pack bags, single bags. And Laura says she gets them in an even bigger than four pack at Costco. And so that's awesome. And so today there is not a, you can go to plantbasedinstantpot.com or healthyslowcooking.com to get the bouillon recipe. If you wanted a ramen recipe right now, the Easy Vegan Cookbook is where it is, and I'm not sure how, I'm not really sticking to it. 
So I'm just kind of making this up, and you guys are watching. So you can rewatch the recipe um, on the video because there'll be replay, so you can watch it as much as you want. But basically, I sauteed an onion, some garlic, some mushrooms. Then I put in some bouillon cubes, some water, um, some soy sauce, tamari, some carrots, so a little bit of mushroom powder. I think that's about where we are right now. And so like other things you can do, you can either serve these on the side or, on, or put them in the broth as like agave. Uh, this is blue agave sriracha. Um, Cheryl is having really some problems with her stomach, so I'm not going to add anything spicy to hers, but I'll probably top mine with a little bit of it. You could put some of this in. You could serve soy sauce on the side. You could use coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. You could use um, a mushroom um, broth instead of making this all together, or you could just have it and still have all the other onions and mushrooms and carrots and things like that. I probably put about a cup, cup, cup and a half of carrots, probably two to three cups of sliced shiitake tops, half cup of onion. I think that's what we're looking at. Hello, Mr. Doc Rock. He's my Vlogmas hero that you guys keep hearing about. Um, I appreciate you showing up very, very much. Um, and yeah, Ramesh agrees with the ginger. Ginger is a delicious flavor. As we cook it, we're going to decide if we need more, though. And I say yes, we already need more. So this was some ginger, actually, that was in the freezer. I took it out right before this. And if you notice, this isn't really coming down, but it's there. So I'm going to put maybe another teaspoon. I almost always end up using about a tablespoon of ginger because it's so yummy and it's also very good for your stomach. So I think I said just a minute ago that Cheryl was having some tummy issues and ginger will be very nice for her to have in this. Now if you leave it uncooked, it can be spicy, which is a little more than Cheryl can handle. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little miso in here. And I think we're going to go ahead. I am using white miso because that's what I have. You could use red miso. If you don't do soy, you could use chickpea miso. Um, and let's go ahead and put a whole teaspoon in here. And you can also make just a yummy miso soup with this by simply putting it in some hot water with some chopped up dried seaweed. And that is also good for your tummy. Let's get that. We want it to be on a lower heat when we add the miso. So we, cause it has some good fermentation like value. So we don't want to boil all that out. Let's see what we got. Oh, and Doc loves some ginger too. Who doesn't love ginger? I've been really into that whole ginger turmeric tea at night. And I've gone through um, my stash that we made a couple of weeks ago. So you guys, if you're wanting to make your own, I have an Instant Pot recipe of that. You can get the recipe for that on plantbasedinstantpot.com. Just when you go to the website, at the top there's search and at near the bottom, there's a little magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm digging the, the miso <laughs> a lot, and I'm going to put in a second teaspoon. So instead of just giving you a recipe today, I'm kind of teaching you how I go about trying to, to develop recipes, right? So, and we always think that there's one right way to do things, and I can tell you right now, there's no truth in that. Very few things are there only one way to do it. And in cooking, there's so many different ways. And you might like more miso than I do. I might like more miso than you do. So even though I may have made a recipe, tested it with a dozen people, I'm still kind of producing a recipe that I'm happy with. 
So my recipes, I want you to be happy with. That's why I encourage you to taste and, and play with it. That's perfect. So that with the shiitake mushrooms, it probably could still use a little more ginger. But let's well, I'll do the ginger. I'm also going to put in some of these greens. They're going to cook really quick. And I'm not sure exactly what these are. I think they are actually giant pieces of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> um, it was unclear in my Misfit Market. But you could put um, Brussels sprouts. You could put kale. You could put spinach. You just want to get a little bit of color. See? Isn't that prettier? To me, and also, if you're having trouble getting greens into your family of different kinds, try mincing them and cutting them smaller. That's less intimidating for people trying to eat things that they're not so sure about. Okay, now, I will, while that's cooking, Ooh, Doc Rock, straight ginger tea with a dash of lemon, lowered blood pressure rapidly when stressed. Excellent. Oh, it saved my college days in Japan. I keep forgetting because I actually studied Aikido for a long time, so I kind of, I love some Japanese stuff too. Um, but I always forget that. I never ended up visiting, which has always made me very sad. So maybe in the future. Um, there's a wonderful woman, woohoo, woo Elizabeth Ando. And she does um, vegan and vegetarian um, Japanese cooking. So you guys might want to look her up on Amazon. I got to meet her in person at the, a culinary event. And she was really adorable. And we had um, a lot of things in common. Because I guess, and I don't know the word, and Doc, I don't know if you know the word for it either. But there's a Japanese word that basically it's like remembering foods you used to have. And she talks a lot about how vegetarian and vegan foods that we're using for like food memories, right? It's not actually the meat we're trying to replicate as much as the flavors and the memory. And I feel like that's so true. Like when I make um, jackfruit barbecue, right? Jackfruit looks a lot like pulled pork and I grew up in Winston-Salem and that's what we ate but it's the flavors of the sauce it's having the vinegar North Carolina barbecue sauce that really makes it something super special oh doc now I am coming to Hawaii to see you he made me so I've been I got a book and I've been wanting to make miso, but I have not done it yet. So you have to tell me all your secrets. Now even more of your secrets. And Joanne uses um, ginger for tummy aches, too. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit more to the official induction burner simmer, which is 300 watts, which means nothing to me, but maybe it means something to you. Simmer means something to me. Um, and so Laura says, thanks for doing this live stream today. You're keeping me company while I make soup. Awesome. Thank you for keeping me company. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, Doc. So, and let's see, Joanne's beautiful colors. Yeah, and just, just adding just a little bit of something in there. Adding those carrots and adding that extra kind of, the green is kind of bok choy-esque. It's kind of like if a bok choy, like, had a baby with kale, maybe? That's why I think it's giant Brussels sprout leaves. Um, yeah, gr and Ramesh says greens are good for digestion, good for eyes, and plus they're just, they're just so full of so much healthful goodness of, for all different things. Um, and Doc Rock says, let's get live crew is going to make a team trip, so you're coming soon. Excellent. And so don't forget, you guys, you know I've been going live every day in December. It's because of Doc Rock and Diana Gladney. They're awesome video people, so if you guys are interested in video at all, be sure to follow them on YouTube. They are my faves. And they're, they're the people that you can listen to them talk about tech stuff, and it doesn't feel like, oh, tech stuff. It's like, 
ooh, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, so, yeah, and Joanne says everybody's in um, soup mode. And Brussels sprout leaves are my favorite greens. Yeah, I've never seen them that big before. So, but you know, when you get Misfit Market, sometimes you never know what you're going to get. It's exciting. Um, oh, thank you, Heather. She said she loved the flavor profile and the added greens. And again, depending on what kind of miso you use, you may use more or less. Like, I have a feeling that Doc's miso is going to be strong. It's not going to be this mellow white miso. <laughs> I could be wrong, but if I make a batch, I'm going to make it like, Rrr! like, I don't know, like the Godzilla of miso, where you just put a little bit in and it has all the flavors. See, I'm already like, what is it, fangirling your miso. That's wrong. Um, Yeah, Elizabeth Ando. Yes, Diane. Um, and yes, yeah, someone else said somebody else's cookbooks, but I don't know them. So I'm not saying they're good or bad or indifferent. And I can't see who the Facebook user is, so I don't know if I know them either. But yeah, Elizabeth Ando. And all of her books aren't vegetarian. But, you know, we always talk about that, too. So you can come to my Facebook group. It's free, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. And if you've got an old recipe that was meaty or has some things that you can't have anymore, bring it there, and we'll see what we can do. It won't be a one-to-one, -one, but you can still you can fulfill that craving. And usually it is like this memory. Like, I remember very clearly when I started missing barbecue. And it, I had been a vegetarian for 20 years then. And it really was just this search for flavors that I remembered from growing up. And there's, there's so many wonderful flavors and things in the world. Let me see how this guy's doing. Okay. And you can make this brothier. Let me let you see what we got here. We got us some stoop going. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water and I'm going to go ahead and set up these bowls and you guys can see it's very thick. This is how I wanted it. You could make it thinner. There's no judgment here. And you could also put more ginger or things in here. So I'm going to go ahead and serve it this way. Let me give these noodles a quick rinse. So they're not as stuck together. I went ahead and cooked them ahead of time. And in fact, if this was something you wanted to do a lot, you could have some of these cooked in the fridge and you could even just drop them in the soup itself. And divvy these out evenly. Now, did you see, I don't know if you saw before, I'll have to show you in the front side. These are our Harry Potter bowls. So Cheryl has her Hufflepuff, and I have my Ravenclaw bowl, because it's still the holidays, right? So we gotta have some fun. Alrighty. Now, let's get some of that yummy soup in there. And I like more goodies than Cheryl does. So there's one. Let's get the other one in here. And you gotta make sure to get some good broth in there. Okay, so there's gonna be some leftovers or I'll end up eating more soup. Okay, so this is what we've got here. And we could add some more ginger on top. You could put some scallions, which is Cheryl's nemesis. We could squirt a little sriracha on there. You could really put, you could put bean sprouts if you had some sprouts. And it's just like a lovely, easy meal. 
Um, oh, awesome. Ramesh is vegetarian. That's wonderful. Um, I went vegetarian in 1983. See, if you wear sweatshirts and Harry Potter shirts, it takes like 10 years right off you. <laughs> so, um, and I've probably been vegetarian now, I mean, vegan now for about 10 years. It was a transition as I was writing my first cookbook, which is why I, I was paying attention to that and not necessarily paying attention to the date that I stopped eating um, dairy and eggs and things like that. So, but it's, it's been a while. Um, Cheryl, my wife, transitioned a little over a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a quarter ago, I think. So she's been doing vegan since then and it's really helped a lot of her numbers when she gets tested. So we've been very, ha very um, happy about that. And Amelia says, the secret to a good romaine is letting them soak in water or broth so the noodles expand. I think that's good. I, don't, I haven't been trying to make the best romaine, but, romaine, but um, I think that sounds like a great idea. Laura says, nom. And somebody's making a, uh, a soup a vegan soup um, and made my mushroom and butternut squash chili bean soup. Oh, awesome. And that's from the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook, you guys, for your Instant Pot. And it is a soup that has chili flavors. So s some people feel strongly about that soup. Some people are not, they feel like they got duped <laughs> and it tastes like chili, but it's not chili, which was not my intention, but you know. Um, Diane lo loves miso noodle soup. Awesome. And somebody's adding it to their menu. And Mia said, did I say leftovers? Mia is, um, you've heard me talk about Howard Jacobson and Mia as well. Mia is my basil hookup. So she gets me basil and herbs. Um, awesome. And yes, there are leftovers. And you could, I've got more noodles to cut up, cook up. So there we go. Okay, somebody said it might be dinner. Ah, thank you, Helene. Helene remembers it was September 2019 when Cheryl went um, vegan because it actually happened at um, the Triangle Veg Fest fancy dinner before the Veg Fest. Like she talked to Josh Lajani and it changed for her. Obviously, I have no impact. <laughs> I just cook. <laughs> but you know how it is when you're married to someone, then somebody else has to be the one to like turn on a light bulb sometimes. Well, you guys, this has been awesome. I don't know how much longer I can look at this without actually eating it, so I think I'm going to go. I do not know what I'm making this week. However, at some point this week, we're going to make black-eyed peas for New Year's Day. And I need you all to promise me, if you're in a place and you can get black-eyed peas, that you will get black-eyed peas and eat them on New Year's Day. Why? I'm from the South. And we have a superstition that you need to eat black-eyed peas for luck and greens, collard greens traditionally, for money. They're good for you. They're delicious. And I'm going to give you a couple amazing ways to make them. I make mine all smoky and creamy. And then with some of the leftovers, we'll make a black-eyed pea pecan pate that's to die for. So, And you can make it without the pecans if you have a nut allergy. The pecans just add that extra darkness, but we can find some other ways to do that. Okay, awesome, you guys. So I will be back tomorrow because I'm going to be going live it, through New Year's Eve. Probably I'll come on New Year's Day and do something really quick, too. And then I've got to plan and decide what I'm doing for the rest of the year. But I will be doing lives at least weekly, if not multiple times a week, because you guys have been so awesome to hang out with. And if I make a plan, then I can plan that there are recipes already up for these. So that would help you guys a lot, too. Oh, awesome. Somebody's just coming on. That You are going to be able to watch this as a replay. Basically, I just made simple mushroom ramen with a little bit of miso, miso broth. And so it's easy peasy, but that way you can kind of get an idea of how I did it and taste it along the way to try and season it the way I liked it. And Ramesh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, Diane says, black eyed peas and collard greens, that's the way the world works. And let's all just, let's just 
I've been seeing this on Facebook a lot. Like, what is it? Just everybody, like, keep your hands to yourself. Let's just walk slowly and quietly into 2021. And I feel that too. I'm just saying, let's make sure we all eat a little black eyed peas and some collard greens and see if that doesn't help. Because I think anything's worth trying at this point. Okay, it's Mayor. Oh, Marilyn, it's good to see you. And uh, thanks for letting me know. I will see you guys tomorrow and I will be making something that I'll probably decide the hour before I do it. But it is lovely having you. And Diane, you have a wonderful day too, all of you guys. And um, don't forget, go over to Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Say you saw me here and you don't have to answer the rest of the questions. You can sign up and get on my mailing list there if you want to. Um, and that's all I can think of for today. I know, say, <laughs> Joanne, save the world, eat black eyed peas. I, I think we could, that, maybe that's the theme of the week. Maybe, I'll see how many black eyed peas I got. I may have to go to the store. I've got some special Rancho Gordo 2020, I, I think it was 2021 it says on it, um, black eyed peas that are marked for New Year's Day. And you have a great day too, Jeremy. Okay guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Take a deep breath, be kind to yourself. You probably took a little time off last week. It doesn't mean you have to jump in full force today, okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.